Welcome back, everyone. Color 10 investigates for you the Ride the Ducks tragedy in Branson. Strong thunderstorms impact us pretty often here in the Ozarks, many of them often severe warnings. But maybe you've never thought about how your own experience plays a role in how you react to these watches and warnings. Well, meteorologist Elisa Rafa looked into it for us. She joins us now. Weather impacts everything we do on a daily basis, on your morning drive or as you're fishing on the lake. Watches and warnings help us stay safe when hazardous weather rolls through. And one week ago today, those alerts were in place, yet we still lost lives. So we decided to take a deeper look at warning communication, how it started and how it's perceived. Our mission at the National Weather Service is to keep people safe. We save lives and to protect property. Anyone that works in the weather community, the National Weather Service, broadcast meteorologists, emergency managers, they know that mantra well. But even when we get it right, it can go wrong. Uh, what a storm today on Table Rock. Something that rang too loudly with the Ride the Ducks tragedy in Branson. Senior meteorologist Doug Kramer was on duty Thursday. Severe thunderstorm warnings are very important and we issue those for a reason. The criteria for a severe thunderstorm is winds at 58 miles per hour or greater, hail to quarter size or larger. All storms have hazardous lightning. At the time of the sinking, winds at the Branson Airport clocked up to 65 miles per hour. Warnings were issued 30 to 40 minutes in advance. And providing them with very long lead times. So one, they can get the information and then they can process that information and then react. React. That's the part that can get cloudy. There's something called optimistic bias that, you know, when we hear a tornado warning, for example, we might think, ah, it won't hit my area. My house will be OK. Uh, and it's natural to think that way. However, it does get us in a little bit of a pickle because sometimes that risk is heading towards you. Dr. Gina Asko is a weather risk communication expert, a social consultant contracted with NOAA. She says we're used to our routines and we have to think about how they're interrupted by severe weather, which in the Ozarks. We are in, geographically in a good region where we see a high frequency of severe weather, especially a high frequency of flash flooding. Tornado warnings are not as common. Not everyone has experienced tornado damage. And for that reason, perhaps we think that thunderstorms happen more often, true, uh, but that they don't have a, a similar impact. A high end severe thunderstorm of 80 mile per hour winds, for example, can be just as dangerous as a low end tornado. It's these preconceived perceptions of weather hazards that can impact how we react. You build experiences based on what you know and, and on your surroundings. And when your surroundings change, especially if you're a tourist, that can be awfully challenging for people to, to assess their, their risk. Especially if you know you're going to be outdoors, you need to be weather aware. The public is responsible for understanding their risk. Broadcasters are responsible for communicating that risk. But these companies also have a responsibility to ensure they understand their risk as well. The American Meteorological Society recommends these weather sensitive companies like baseball stadiums, fairgrounds, concert venues, lake tours, engage in proactive planning and decision making. To reach out to a certified consulting meteorologist uh, to ensure they have a plan that works for not only them as individuals, but for them as a company. The goal to save lives is the same. If that is our goal, then we have to communicate the risk in that way. But it's a message that's not one size fits all. Whether you're at home, on the lake, or on the field. To some, it feels like hype, and to others, it feels like a great safety message. Know the forecast, know the hazards. Of course, in the Ozarks, staying weather aware is a year-round task because we get dangerous ice and dangerous severe storms in the spring and summer. Um, so three takeaways that I, I would love for you to take out of this is to download, whether it's the Color 10 weather app or, or when you think fits you better, um, to get those alerts right to your phone. When we cut into programming, please be patient with us because if you're at home, you're like, eh, it's not a big deal, but there could be someone on the lake or on the field that needs that information. And if you're 
your business that's weather sensitive, check out this story on OzarksFirst.com. I have a link to those uh, weather safety guidelines from the American Meteorological Society. Technology helps so much in, in getting that word out. You can just watch us. There's apps, there's yeah. Twitter, there's weather radios, there's mm -hmm. everything. Many so venues. be aware. Right? Yeah. Do your best not to take it for granted. Stick with us this morning. We have Daybreak in 10 right after the break.